DCCX, JMRI, Raspberry Pi and me, or at least that is what this short video was going to be called originally. Welcome to Witten Tour. When I originally started to build my DCC layout, I looked at the various options for controlling things and eventually decided to use a Raspberry Pi with a PyProg 3 Plus board and the JMRI software. Part of the reason I originally went for the Raspberry Pi plus JMRI route was because the open source JMRI software provided all I needed for my simple layout, while the Raspberry Pi was able to attach to my home Wi-Fi, which meant I could connect to it from other computers or from my Apple or Android devices. In addition, the JMRI software can be used to program decoders as well as providing a roster of locos, which then makes it simple to choose which loco to control. I must admit, my allocation of loco addresses in the past has been a bit random, so I tend to rely on the names I allocate in the roster when choosing which loco to run. At some stage I'll have to go back and allocate better addresses to my locos, but for now, JMRI makes it simple for me to know which locos I'm going to be controlling. The other advantage I found with JMRI is that it's straightforward to allocate labels to the various loco functions. So when controlling a loco, I don't have to remember which each individual function button does. I'm now at the stage of thinking about building a new layout. And once again, I've started looking at the various options available for control. I have been very pleased with the Raspberry Pi Model 4 with the Pi Prog 3 Plus board running the GMI software. But with Raspberry Pis being in short supply, I thought it was worth looking for a possible alternative controller for my DCC8 layout. Of course, there are many DCC control options available with varying costs and varying levels of functionality. So a while ago, I put together a DCC-X command station based on a Mega 2560 controller board with a motor shield and a Wi-Fi shield, using the excellent information and software on the DCC-X website, which contains all the necessary details and provides good instructions on what to do. I found the DCC-X command station hardware was straightforward to put together and the necessary software is open source. So all in all, it cost me just under the £40 mark to build the controller. Though I have to admit, that doesn't include the price of power adapters, which I already had. Having built the controller, I then needed to work out how best to use it. And of course, I wanted to at least have the functionality I'm used to from the Pi plus GMRI software. Before progressing further, I'd like to thank Kevin Smith from the DCCX team who sent me some really good pointers on how to use the DCCX command station, as well as information on creating rosters for DCCX using Xrail. I'll come on to that maybe in a little bit later. So basically, I've tried two ways to use the DCCX command station. The first one is directly via the Wi-Fi, Secondly, has been using JMRI on a connected computer. As I said, the DCCX command station I put together included a Wi-Fi shield, so I was able to set up the command station to attach to my home network. It's done fairly easily by editing the config.h file, which comes with the DCCX software, and then just using the Arduino IDE to compile and download the software to the Mega 2560. Just to note, the Arduino IDE is available from the Arduino website and it's free to download and use, though you can always make a contribution to the running costs if you'd like to. Once the DCCX command station was on the network, I was able to connect to it using the allocated IP address, which meant I could connect directly to the command station from my Android or Apple phones. 
As you can imagine, there are quite a few apps available, both for Android and Apple. Some seem designed to work best via GMR servers, either the throttle server or the web server. Some allow direct communication or connection, should I say, to the DCCX command station itself. And of course, some are designed to work with particular hardware. For example, the Hornby app, which uses Bluetooth direct to the decoder in the loco. I must admit, I found the process of choice rather confusing, partly because it's not always clear as to what protocol the app supports, or whether a JMRI server was needed. So it's often the case of download the app, try it out. That obviously meant for some apps, the ones you had to pay for, I either wasn't able to try out the full functionality, or I just skipped them completely. And I'm sure there are some very good paid apps out there, but I haven't tried them at this moment. Having said that, I've found the following apps enable me to connect directly to the DCCX command station, and all of them enabled me to control my locos. First of all, for Apple, and I must admit I found it was limited choice when it came to Apple apps. There's the WI Throttle Lite, which has very limited functionality, but is really there just so you can see if it will work. The cost of the WI Throttle app itself is around about the £10 mark, and I probably will purchase it at some stage. Then another app was Train Driver. That allows for three locos to be controlled, but it didn't seem to have a way of creating a roster, and it therefore had limitations. There's also SRCP, which seemed very similar to Train Driver, had the same basic interface and had the same limitations, could control up to three apps, but up three locos rather, but didn't seem to have a means for creating a roster. When it came to Android apps, the choice seemed quite a bit wider. And I suppose top of the list is Engine Driver. That can control up to six locos, depending on the throttle chart you choose. It does have a roster feature, but it depends on what is already stored in the uh, command station, and I'll come on to that later. Then, as well as Engine Driver, there was RT Drive DCC++. That controls locos individually, one at a time, but there was a fairly simple way to switch between locos, and there was a database which was effectively a roster feature, and I could actually allocate labels um, to the different functions. There was also DCC PP cab. Again, you could control up to what appeared to be 12 locos. You basically load them into different registers and you could switch between them fairly simply. The app seemed quite comprehensive, I must admit, but I can't say the interface was intuitive. There also seemed to be a database feature, as I said, which allows information on multiple locos to be stored. And I think it would be able to have more than 12 locos in the app and then you choose which 12 you're going to control, but I haven't tried that. So having tried out direct connection to the DCCX command station and having found I could use it and control my locos without the need of a computer, I thought about the second option, which is using JMRI. And for this option, I'm grateful for comments sent to me, especially by Kevin Scroll. My first thought was that the DCCX command station was in effect a replacement for the Pi Prog 3 Plus board. So I could still use the Raspberry Pi connected over a serial link to run the JMI software. But of course it was also possible to replace the Raspberry with a computer, a PC or a MacBook or a Mac. Of course there are other options as well. For example you can connect over the Wi-Fi to the command station. But in the end, I decided to connect the DCCX command station over the serial link to a MacBook with JMRI running on the MacBook. At this point, I did have a slight issue with getting Java onto the MacBook. Java 11 is required or needed for later versions of JMRI. And it took me a little while to find the necessary Java package to install. I tried different routes, but eventually I did find I could download what I needed from the adoptium.net site, and I'll include a link down in the comments below. Once Java was installed on the MacBook, it was a reasonable simple task, 
to install JMRA on the computer, basically just downloading the latest version from the JMRA website, and then start it up and set it to connect to the DCCX command station via the appropriate serial link that the command station was connected to. All this was pretty straightforward, so the JMRA software supports connection to DCC++, on which DCCX is based. So, having got my DCCX command station connected to my MacBook, and having got my command station connected to my track, I was ready to try out other options for controlling the layout. Of course, the first was to control things directly from the MacBook itself, running the JMI software, such as Panel Pro, and also the WI throttle, which comes on, and you could then do things like choose a loco, switch the power onto the track, run locos, etc., and or was as you'd expect. Of course, the second option is back to an app, whether it's on a phone or an iPad, and use that connected to the GRMI server. Now again, depending on the app you choose, you might end up having to do that via a throttle server or the web server. The apps I use tend to use the throttle server from the GRMI. Again, I looked at a number of apps other than WI Throttle and Engine Driver, such as Cab Engineer and Gigi Trains Pro on the Android. But in general, as I said before, the Android apps seem to offer better functionality overall. And I've still got to try out the full WI Throttle on Apple. In the end, after my initial testing, I decided the best thing to do was concentrate on Engine Driver on Android and WI Throttle on Apple. That's not to say the other apps I looked at aren't good enough, but the choice was driven partly by the fact I'd been using Engine Driver for a while, and it seemed to me that on Apple, WI Throttle does seem to be the best option. Also, both apps had already been seen to work directly with the DCCX command station, and they also worked via Jeremiah on the MacBook, so I thought that might well be an advantage. At this stage, you're probably asking, what about exploiting the functionality of DCCX itself? What about setting up routes with XRail? What else can be done using JMRI? They're all good questions and ones I will plan to follow up on in due course once I've had time to try things out. Of course, JMRI, it's fairly simple to attach it to a programming track and program decoders, and I've already done quite a bit of that. So that is one advantage of GMRI, and I know GMRI can does lots of other things as well. But it's fair to say DCCX also does the same thing and has a lot of the same functionality, and I think may in the long run be more usable without a computer. For example, when directly connected with a Wi-Fi DCCX command station, User-defined XRail, which stands for Extended Railway Automation Animation Instruction Language, user-defined XRail scripts, automatically it pushed to and displayed on engine driver and WI throttle apps as GUI buttons. So it'll be interesting to see what can be done with those. Obviously, they need to, the scripts need to be written, downloaded to the Mega 2560, but then it'll be interesting to see how they then come up on the different apps. One feature I did try out was the use of XRail to create a roster engine list directly inside the command station. The process is quite straightforward actually. You include the necessary commands in a particular config file, in this case called myautomation.h, then use the Arduino IDE to load the software into the Mega 2560. Once the information, the roster information, is in the command station, it automatically displays your engines on the Wi-Fi throttle apps, in particular Engine Driver and WI Throttle. So you don't need Jeremiah on your, in my case, MacBook, or a Raspberry or a PC. The information is stored directly in the command station, which is going to be, I think, quite useful. Of course, starting out with any new software always involves a learning curve but I look forward to getting to know more about the features of DCCX, such as using the embedded XRail to create scripts to run engines and to control accessories that are around the layout. So far, I've been impressed with what is available from DCCX, and given the hardware for the command station comes in at around the £40 mark, 
It seems to be an option well worth exploring and taking time to get to grips with. And that is what I plan to do.